Welcome back to The Daily Poem here in the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Here on the podcast, this week I've been reading Christmas poems with you. And today I'm going to read a triumvirate of poems. A trio? Is trio better? I kind of like the word triumvirate. A trio of poems by Phyllis McGinley. She was a poet and children's book author who lived from 1905 to 1978. In 1961, she won the Pulitzer Prize. She is known for the humor and satire of her poetry. She was often read in the New Yorker, in the Ladies' Home Journal, the Saturday Review, the Atlantic, you know, many of those journals and magazines that were quite popular during those years when she was alive, and in which short stories and poetry were, were such a big deal. She has, in the Everyman collection of, of poetry that, that um, I've been reading from and mentioning a couple times, she has three poems in there. And neither of them are terribly long, and they're all, to varying degrees, pretty funny um, and pretty enjoyable. So I thought I would just read those three poems to you today um, for some, you know, for something of a of a difference to kind of mix it up a little bit. I won't make too many comments about these unless something particular comes to mind when I'm done. But I think together they're they're a, they're a good read, and uh, I thought they would be a, a fun read this week before Christmas. So I hope you enjoy these poems by Phyllis McGinley. Up first is Lady Selecting Her Christmas Cards. Fastidiously, with gloved and careful fingers, through the marked samples she pursues her search. Which shall it be, the snowscape's wintry languors, complete with church? An urban skyline, children sweetly pretty sledding downhill, the chaste, ubiquitous wreath? Schooner or candle or the simple Scotty with verse underneath? Perhaps it might be better to emblazon with words alone the stiff, punctilious nature Oh, not Victorian, certainly. This season, one meets it everywhere. She has a duty proper to the weather. A birth, she must announce, a rumor to spread. Wherefore, the very spheres once sang together, and a star shone overhead. Here are the tidings which the shepherds panted one to another, kneeling by their flocks, and they will bear her name, engraved and not printed, 1250 for the box. <laughs> I enjoy, I enjoy the shifting tones in that poem and the shifting perspectives as well. This next one is called City Christmas. And, and the city, um, particularly the suburban life, um, I'm not terribly familiar with Phyllis McGinley, but she did, from what I understand, write quite a bit about this, this topic. This is called City Christmas. Now is the time when the great urban heart more warmly beats, exiling melancholy. Turkey comes tobble d'ote or a la carte. Our elevator wears a wreath of holly. Mendicant Santa Claus in flannel robes at every corner contradicts his label. Alms asking. We've a tree with colored globes in our apartment foyer on a table. There's a promise or a thread of snow noised by the press. We pull our collars tighter and 20,000 doormen hourly grow politer and politer and politer. And this third one is called Office Party. This holy night in open forum, Miss McIntosh, who handles files, has lost one shoe and her decorum. Stately, the frozen chairman smiles on media, desperately vocal. Credit, though they have lost their hopes of edging toward an early local, finger their bonus envelopes. The glassy boys, the bursting girls of copy, start a conga clatter to a swung carol. Limply curls the final sandwich on the platter till Hark, a herald messenger, room 414, lifts loudly up his quivering tenor. Salesmen stir libation for his lily cup. Noel, he pipes, Noel, Noel. Some wag beats tempo with a ruler, and the plump blonde from personnel collapses by the water cooler. So each of these poems has been a little bit different than the poems that I've been reading, you know, the serious poems, like the Richard Wilbur poem, or even the Wendell Berry poem. One of the things that I love about these poems is Phyllis McGinley's sense of voice and, like I said, perspective. Um, if you've ever seen the movie The Apartment, which is one of my favorite movies, all three of these poems uh, remind me of, of that movie, 1959. But in each of them, it seems like the common thread is the concept that it's so easy for us to inject ourselves uh, into the Christmas season, so to speak, to make more of ourselves than we deserve to be made. We see that with the lady in the Christmas cards in particular in that first poem, Lady Selecting Her Christmas Cards, which I love the title of, by the way, because it makes it seem like a painting itself, just like the sort of paintings that she is referencing could be on the Christmas cards that the lady has to choose from. And you can imagine on the other side of those cards 
It's just the title of some some random sort of saccharine Christmas painting. But she's fastidious. She takes the whole thing very seriously, which isn't wrong. But ultimately, she stamps her name on them, which is both funny and sad at the same time. Quickly, I'll read each of these one more time, and then we'll go. I won't say anything else about them, but I'll hopefully you can enjoy them one more time. Lady Selecting Her Christmas Cards by Phyllis McGinley. Fastidiously, with gloved and careful fingers, through the marked samples she pursues her search. Which shall it be, the snow-scaped wintry langers complete with church? An urban skyline, children sweetly pretty sledding downhill. The chaste, ubiquitous wreath, schooner or candle of the simple Scotty with verse underneath? Perhaps it might be better to emblazon with words alone the stiff, punctilious square. Oh, not Victorian, certainly. This season one meets it everywhere. She has a duty proper to the weather. A birth she must announce, a rumor to spread, wherefore the very spheres once sang together and a star shone overhead. Here are the tidings which the shepherds panted one to another, kneeling by their flocks. And they will bear her name, engraved and not printed, 1250 for the box. And here's City Christmas. Now is the time when the great urban heart more warmly beats, exiling melancholy. Turkey comes table d'hote, or a la carte, our elevator wears a wreath of holly. Mendicant Santa Claus in flannel robes at every corner contradicts his label, alms asking. We have a tree with colored globes in our apartment foyer, on a table. There is a promise, or a threat of snow, noised by the press. We pull our collars tighter, and 20,000 doormen hourly grow politer and politer and politer. Office party. This holy night in open form, Miss McIntosh, who handles files, has lost one shoe in her decorum. Stately, the frozen chairman smiles on media, desperately vocal. Credit, though they have lost their hopes of edging towards an early local, finger their bonus envelopes. The glassy boys, the bursting girls of copy, start a conga clatter to a swung carol. Limply curls the final sandwich on the platter till Hark, a herald messenger, room 414, lifts loudly up his quavering tenor. Salesmen stir libation for his lily cup. Noel, he pipes, Noel, Noel. Some wag beats tempo with a ruler, and the plump blonde from personnel collapses by the water cooler. This has been The Daily Poem. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll be back tomorrow with another one.